Satskrug, we have your insight on you know, how re religion and belief systems, you know, are shaping leadership models and, you know, where they should. The religions of the world uh, have brought peace and brought mayhem to people, has spread love and spilled blood. It's an inexpensive psychiatry. So if you're looking at treating yourself in some way, some kind of solace to find some substance to stand on, it's okay. But when you say, I'm a leader, or when people say you're a leader, whichever way it happened to you, Now, your responsibility is not just of one life, but of too many lives. When this comes, one has to strive to enhance one's perception, not get into belief systems of any kind. It doesn't matter from where it comes, because too many people have been screwed up by the scriptures. As holy as they are, with all due respect to them, because these scriptures are like constitutions which are written by God or His messengers. Constitutions are fine only if we can amend them only if we can change them when it needs to be changed. But if it's a divine word, you cannot change. To manage a human being, you don't need a divine word. Because what we refer to as divine is the basis of our existence. Because we didn't create this, the basis of our existence is a certain source which we… we can call it whatever, right now we're using the word divine. That dimension has been propagated in many ways. People are saying God is love, people are saying God is compassion, people are saying God is peace, but the fact of the matter is nobody really knows what is the nature of the source of existence, they're just making it up because it's said somewhere. Because some authority said it, maybe I said it, maybe a Krishna said it or a Buddha said it or somebody else said it. Once you do this, you have done a grave mistake, that is, you are making authority the truth, not truth the authority. If you change one… this one fundamental aspect within you, that truth is not the authority in your life, authority is the truth in your life, then you have derailed your consciousness. There is no room for growth. There is only room for patch-ups and adjustments. There is no genuine growth because you have uprooted yourself from the source which makes this happen. If there is an intelligence here which can transform a piece of bread into such a complex machine of being human, is that not the intelligence that you should seek to touch? If it is not within you, I wouldn't ask, ask you to do it. When it's throbbing within you, should you not access that intelligence? If you want to know any damn thing about creation, is it not best you consult the creator? So instead of turning inward, we're trying to find all kinds of ad hoc solutions which may work in bits and pieces, but it'll never work for your life. It will not means it will not, it doesn't matter 
from where you picked it up, you can pick up slogans and slogans. People go on chanting slogans, picked up bits and pieces from scripture, somebody says this, somebody says that, every day some slogan is being… in the political arena people are shouting slogans, all the religious slogans, okay, <laughs> taken on from sacred scriptures. It's not that I do not respect them, but bits and pieces will never make the whole. You have, let us say, there is a, a phenomenal jigsaw puzzle. You found ten pieces of this, a million pieces jigsaw, you found ten or twenty-five or hundred pieces and you got some form and you thought this is it. How wrong can you be? Can you be any more wrong than that? So, the human mental perception what is in our mind, what is in our thoughts is just what we have perceived through five senses. The very nature of five senses is such that it can only perceive in bits and pieces. If you see this part of my hand, you can't see this part. If you see this part, you can't see this part, not just with my hand. Even if you take a grain of sand, you cannot perceive it the whole. So this is what you're doing with every aspect of life because sense organs perceive everything in parts, everything in comparison, this is good enough for survival. In my perception, when somebody says he's a leader, I believe he is beyond survival, he wants to make something happen which is beyond himself and the people who are with them. If you can manage a thousand people to create something which is larger than all of us put together, only then leadership has gone somewhere, otherwise all you need is a supervisor to make sure they work. Anyway, they'll do some stupid work because they want to make a living. I'm not saying this with disdain, but I'm saying we should not use the word leadership or if you want to take away the word leadership, I'll invent a new word for that <laughs> But in my perception, a leader means somebody who leads you to a place where you yourself would not have gotten by yourself. That you can't get there by yourself. So you're behind a leader because he takes you to a place where you can't go by yourself. If he takes you to a place that you yourself can get, why the hell do you need a leader, I'm asking? Just do your own nonsense <laughs>